I see an apple on the screen, but I don't see a backlight. So nothing here looks that bad. The first thing that I'd want to do is check out the backlight voltage, because different backlight voltages will mean different things. Backlight is legit zero volts. All right, so there's a couple of things that we're going to be searching for and checking for here. We have these data lines over here that go between the screen and the LED driver on pins 15 and 16, respectively. On pins 15 and 16, that is going to go to pins th 3 and 4 of the LCD connector. These are data lines, and these are pulled up by R7752 and R7753. They are pulled up to PP5 ESO, which is 5 volts, so I should be seeing about 5 volts on each of those data lines. So I'm going to double check and see what I'm getting there on those two data lines. The fan is blowing air at me and it's cold. I have 4.6 volts there and 4.6 volts there. Some guy think that's good. If it is communicating with a screen, now what I'm interested in seeing is what happens if I unplug the screen. So I just unplug the screen, and those should be pulled up all the way to 5 because there's nothing there that could be pulling it down. And I get 5.2 and 5.2. Alright, so the screen is indeed able to communicate with the system. Is is U7700 receiving the power it needs to turn on? That's supposed to be on pins 5 and 18. So on pin 5, I should be getting 5 volts, which I am, and then on pin 18. So chip is getting the power it needs to turn on. Next up, I want to see if it's being told to turn on. So it's getting the power it needs to turn on, but let's see what we get at backlight enable. We're going to check over here. Backlight enable is 3.4 volts. All right, so it's being told to turn on. Next up, we're going to check and see if this transistor is opening. Q7700 is a P-channel MOSFET, meaning that it's only going to open if the voltage in the gate, pin 3, is lower than the voltage at the source, pin 4. So let's look for Q7700 and check for the voltage on pins 3 and pins 4. Aha, pin 3 is 12.5. The LED driver is not telling this to open. Now, there is a couple of reasons that could be happening. Could be a bad LED driver, could be an issue with current sensing. So, there is a current sensing resistor here, R7700, and it's going to send this, uh, this system over here with this an LED driver is going to sense how much current is going through the system after the fuse. And if it thinks too much is going through because there's too much of a difference in the voltage from this side of the resistor to that side of the resistor, it's going to turn off. Let's just make sure all those pathways are good here. And that's going to be on pins 11 and 10 of the chip. 11 and 10. So obviously, if I'm going to measure resistance, i got to turn the power off. Uh, let's see. What do we have here between pins 11 and 10? Damn, this is not easy to measure the resistance here. Point 0.5. So current sensing circuit is doing its job. Nothing is corroded here at all. Yet this is not opening. Hmm. Hmm. What could be wrong here? Nope. We are at 3.4 volts in SMC lid, so it's not a hall sensor.
Now, imagine that. This is something we would have never seen if we didn't remove the LED driver. Now, let's see if as somebody watching is paying attention and can tell me what it is that's wrong with this MacBook's backlight. Ugly pad thing. Very good. Now, what is that pad going to be for? One way to find out. We're going to check the schematic in the board view, and this is... This is a really trolling board because we would have never seen that. There was no sign of corrosion to let us know that that was there. Now, if we look, this is for LCD backlight feedback, following the very same failures that occur in many other MacBooks. The feedback pad of the chip is burned over here. And if we look at where, what LCD feedback is, that is going to be going to this voltage divider over here, which takes the voltage from the output and sends it back to the chip so that it could see what it's creating. This is a DC to DC boost circuit. It's going to be switching constantly in order to take a low voltage like 12.5 and turn it into a high voltage like 36 to 50. However, if it doesn't know what it's creating, it's going to want to stop out of safe reasons. So let's say you're driving in your car and somebody throws a towel over your face. You're going to smash on the brakes because if you can't see where you're going while you're speeding yourself up, you're going to want to stop. And the same is true for this. It's not going to produce a backlight if it can't see what it's creating. That's why we got a pulse in the beginning instead of nothing. We got that quick pulse, and then it would decrease the voltage because it couldn't see what it was creating. And that was because this pad over here is burned because it's a MacBook. Now, why did this pad go burning? Why did this pad burn? Why did this circuit die when there are no signs of corrosion, no signs of liquid damage, no signs of physical damage, no sign of anything that had ever been abused in this MacBook whatsoever? Why did that pad just magically burn? Because it's a MacBook. It's a MacBook! Of course it's going to randomly break for no reason. It's a Mac! It's a Mac! It's a Mac! So, let's fix this little MacBook and make it all better again. Do a little bit of scrapey scraping. A little bit of scrapey scraping. And we're going to reveal the copper below the corrosion. Look at that. Nice copper. Now, we're going to add some flux. It thought different. It sure did. It dared to think different, and then it died. So something I've been thinking about doing for the 1 million subscriber special, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but I've been thinking of taking this show on the road. What do you think of, let's say we had a huge projector and a table and a bunch of broken MacBooks, and we had a, and some sort of bleachers where we could have like an 1,000 person audience watch the show and have something like that at, at some venue in Manhattan for the thousand, I mean, the one million subscribers special. So when I say, what is the problem with this board? Everybody could actually yell out, or we could have specific guesses where different people have microphones, or something like that. I'm just going to reinforce that pad with a wire. So it's... Because we have about six months to go until we are at a million. And that's going to be quite a, that's, that's quite the number. I, I always thought that I would have about two to three hundred subscribers at most. Like the max I ever thought would be that of the repair shops that w exist. Like if all 300 repair shops that do this stuff worldwide, uh, that do, you know, component level stuff on MacBooks watched, maybe I would get 300. That's if I got every single one of them to watch. So that was, my, that was actually my high estimate when I started doing this. My high estimate was maybe if I become explosively popular, I'll have 3,000 subscribers. I mean, 300 subscribers. Like a Rossman convention. Perhaps. Perhaps. Roscon. Yeah. Roscon. Or people named Rossman con you out of their money. Roscon. The Rossman Foundation. What if I name the, it after my cat? I'll name the meetup after my cat. We could call it the Clinton Foundation. Great idea. Clinton Con.
Damn it. Keep losing the damn diode. I'm kind of curious who would actually show up to this. If anybody would at all. How many people watching this stream would show up to a series of live shows or a live show in person? Like where we had a stage, we'd have all the MacBooks there, we'd have a, we'd have a setup, we'd have all the donor boards, and we'd have maybe one or two thousand people in an audience. I'm kind of curious if this is a good idea or a complete and utter waste of time. Paul Daniels would be the guest of honor. Paul Daniels would definitely be a guest of honor. I would pay for Paul Daniels' hotel and flight from Australia and for his food and all of his stuff, for being one of the people to like, really get involved in the industry and put a lot of effort into making things better with his software. So I'd love to have, I would be, I would be above thrilled to have Paul Daniels have his own booth as a guest of honor. Nasara would be able to have her own booth talking about how she was able to put mobile fix out of business in just six months. Paul would definitely be there. Paul Daniels would be showing off his new software on stage. Hopefully it would go better than Windows 98 and the BSOD thing. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. And there goes my jumper. Ah, oh, well, we'll fix that in a moment. I would definitely try to fly out Duke as a guest of honor. Duke would definitely be a guest of honor. Duke was an inspiration to me in this field, so I would absolutely have Duke out as a guest of honor. Paul will have a booth that everybody can bring their missing their PM Sleep S4L missing boards to. I'm thinking Paul would actually have a booth with his Almo. So that Tim and everybody could bring their boards that have dead CPUs and Paul could just replace them all. Do the event in front of an Apple store so when customers buy a MacBook, they could give it to you to fix. Whoa, that... No, Central Park. What if we do the show live in Central Park? What if we do it right across the street from the 59th Street Apple store? Could I set up a little gas-powered or battery-powered soldering setup right across the street from an Apple store? Has anybody ever tried to get a street permit for this? That would totally be worth getting a street permit for. Let's see if this board works now that we fixed our feedback. Let's see, is there a street vendor inside here? Because if there's a street vendor inside here, then that means that somebody was allowed to get a permit. So I'm looking for like a hot dog vendor or something. Wait, here we go. Hot dog, hot dog. Okay, how far is this dude from Apple Store? This guy was able to legally get a permit. Bam, here we go. Here we go, folks. That guy was able to legally get a permit. We got like a good six months for this idea. Do it as a charity. Yeah, that, that would actually probably, that would make it easier to do. That would make it easier to do if we did it as a charity. Okay, so I need to get a street permit to have my little cart. My little cart will be my MacBook repair cart. I'd have to invite Jessa. I would need Jessa to help me with the phone side of things. This could be good. I think what we could do is we could do a mobile cart repair event, and then we could also have some sort of Instead of doing a live show, we could have a little cart for the repair event, and then we could have some sort of party nearby. And then the party would be the celebration of the one million. And this, now the funds from the party, let's say we charge 20 or 30 bucks to, for the tickets for the party, that could fund the permit to have my little live truck. This is going to be great. All right, first let's see if we got a backlight on here. As you can see, we have a light on the screen meaning that our little jumper wire has fixed this, so the feedback happened to blow up. Why the feedback blew up and there's no liquid damage or no physical damage? It's a Mac. I can't tell you that. But what I can do is run a jumper wire and fix it for you. Take your money. Or, if you don't want to give me your money, 
because I'm a New York City jackass with a douchebag accent, you could follow the instructions in my video and all the other videos just like it that you'll find down below and fix it yourself. And uh, that's it for this one, and I hope you learned something. With that, let's move on to the next MacBook.